If you like venomous snakes and want to learn more about it, stay tuned because today we're talking about the water mice. So in these series of videos, we're going to learn about the venomous snakes of Georgia, and we're going to go into detail about each particular species, including their habitat, what kind of venom they have, their type of prey that they like to eat, and many other things. So make sure you guys stay tuned for all these cool videos definitely coming soon. If you didn't know, here in Georgia, we have a couple different species of venomous snakes. You have your coral snake, you have your eastern diamondback, you have your timber rattlesnake, you have your pygmy rattlesnake and you have your copperhead and you have your cottonmouth or water moccasin and these snakes can be found across the whole state in various habitats and ecosystems but today we're going to be talking about the water moccasin aka the cottonmouth the cottonmouth scientific name is a kistrodon piscivorus and these guys are semi-aquatic pit vipers meaning they spend the majority of their life either on land or on water their closest relative and next in line in the Kistrodon family will probably be your copperhead, which is going to be your Kistrodon contortrix. And as babies, you can tell how similar these snakes are with the lime green tail that they use as a lure for prey and the banding and other things like that. So as I mentioned earlier, these guys are pit vipers, so that means they have heat seeking pits. As you can see here, they use their heat pits to seek out warm blooded prey items to actually consume. There are actually other snakes with heat pits or labial pits that are way more common like your boas and your pythons. But the pit vipers definitely have a way more advanced heat seeking pit in my opinion. With the cottonmouth there's actually three distinct subspecies of this particular kind of snake and these include your western cottonmouth, your eastern cottonmouth, and also your florida cottonmouth. These pit vipers can grow at around two to four feet long and they can be a pretty hefty side and they're generally thick body snakes in general. So I know at this point you may be wondering, why are these guys called a cotton mouth? This particular snake has a defense mechanism called mouth gaping, where it opens up its mouth as wide as it can and it flashes the white interior of its mouth to flash to its prey to show that it's dangerous. And these guys have known to do a little bit of tail rattling and musking as well. So next up, we're gonna talk about a snake that's commonly confused with the water moccasin. The banded water snake is probably one of the most similar species of non venomous snakes here in the U.S. that actually looks kind of like the water moccasin. So as you can see here from the photographs, they do share a lot of similar banding patterns and other things like that. But some of the differences between the two species of snakes is the fact that the banded water snake is non venomous and also their pupils are completely different. The pupil of the banded water snake has a more rounded appearance uh, because they're a diurnal species of snake, meaning they're more active during the daytime hours but the water moccasin has more cat-like appearance with a slit kind of eye so that's going to be one of the main differences between them along with the water moccasin also has a banding going down the side of its eyes as you can see here so that's another key difference water moccasins also tend to have a more triangular shaped head compared to the banded water snake due to the venom glands that they have that actually holds the venom before it gets injected through their veins so moving on, we're going to talk about venom consistency. So unlike most snakes whose basic form of predation is using a form of constriction to actually take down their prey and ingest it, these guys use a different form of predation called envenomation. And with envenomation, these pit vipers have a venom delivery system that consists of venom glands that's at the top of the head that's connected to two large fangs in the front of the mouth. And they are just like hypodermic needles that they use to inject venom into the actual prey item. Then they wait for the prey to pass away and they follow the scent trail to actually go ingest their food. I have plenty of videos on my channel of this little guy feeding so you should definitely go check those out. I'll put a link in the top right corner of the screen over there. So make sure you guys hit that link. The majority of the venom from the actual cotton mouth consists of a cytotoxic venom. With cytotoxic venom, it works at a molecular level to break down cell membranes, therefore destroying cells one by one, therefore destroying tissue. This is due to the fact that the venom contains phospholipases, which breaks down phospholipids, which consists of the majority of your cell membranes. 
His venom also contains metalloproteinases, which that and among other things causes swelling and pain at the location. And with all the cell breakdown from the venom working in your veins, it's going to cause necrosis of the tissue. So if you happen to be bitten by one of these snakes, you should definitely seek out medical attention immediately. So moving on to habitat for the water moccasin. So as you can see from the photo here, the water moccasin's distribution area goes all the way over to Texas to like around Arkansas and then all the way around Florida, Georgia on the East Coast area as well. And these snakes are usually associated with bodies of water such as creeks, streams, marshes, swamps, and shores of ponds and lakes. But they're not limited only to aquatic habitats. All in all, these guys are pretty awesome snakes. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys tell me down in the comments how you guys enjoyed this video and tell me what the next snake I should do for the venomous snakes of Georgia.